Hello, welcome back to a Boring Revolution, your number one news source for thinking regards to the Boring Company. I'm back with another predictions episode. We're on prediction number nine, so let's get going. So, as you know, the predictions format basically works like this. I predict something and then we go back to looking at that particular prediction. It's around 12 to 18 months. So, prediction number nine. Now, I've been thinking about this more and more over the last month or so. And I think this is a superb idea. There is no mention of it really by the Boeing Company either in any of their talks or on their website, but I'm pretty confident they're going to do this because it makes perfect sense, uh, both economically and both from an actual uh, implementing this system on a large scale perspective. So, during high demand periods, some pods will form into large platoons of four to ten vehicles. Now, when you typically hear about platoons, you're thinking maybe of uh, lorries or semis, as you guys like to call them. And they form into platoons of maybe two or three lorries in order to save fuel. However, it can also be implemented in a tunnel with several pods, if not more. It will be implemented between 6am till 10am and 2.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. Those are the sort of the main rush hour periods in a typical city. But why? Why would you do this? What are the advantages of this? Now, don't get me wrong, there are some minor disadvantages to this. However, the vast majority of it is advantages. So, if you look at this particular diagram, this is a vehicle that's been in a wind tunnel. You can see the area in red here. This is the high pressure area. And that's what's slowing down your vehicle the faster you get. The faster you get, the higher pressure we have in this area. And the same goes for this low pressure area at the rear of the vehicle. Excuse me, guys. That's more of like a suction force on the vehicle, pulling it back as it's going along. So why would you do this? The reduction in aerodynamic drag of a platoon provides excellent energy savings. The more vehicles you put in a platoon, the more energy you will save overall, moving people from point A to point B. Same goes for having a longer train. What you're essentially doing is you are taking this high pressure area here and you are essentially sending it over the top of the rear vehicles. So. If you send these multiple vehicles through a wind tunnel, you'll find that vehicles 2, 3, 4, all the way up to vehicle 10 don't have this high pressure area here. In fact, what happens is the air goes over the vehicle and then it goes over the vehicle behind it, then over the vehicle behind that. And overall, it works in quite a good way in terms of reducing energy efficiency. And that has been proven in various studies of lorries or semi trucks that have been platooning. Will improve throughput inside the tunnel by at least 25%. You could run more vehicles inside a one mile tunnel. Theoretically, you could run hundreds, many, many hundreds of vehicles. It just depends on obviously if you have the demand to do so. So basically on what I've seen, I think you could definitely have a 25% increase in throughput through a tunnel just by platooning uh, during the rush hours. Reduces the amount of downtime for pods for charging. Obviously, you're using less energy. Therefore, you will not need to charge as often. Maybe the vehicles, I mean, we don't know as of yet the, the range of the pods, but let's say the pods have a range of 280 miles. Well, with platooning, they potentially could have a range of 340 miles, maybe even 350 miles. Therefore, you don't need to charge the vehicles as often. You might only need to charge them every uh, nine hours instead of every seven hours, say. So that is a good saving in terms of time and electricity. 
We'll, sell, we'll save millions in construction costs as less levels of tunnel are required. If you can get more throughput in a tunnel, i.e. you can get hundreds of more pods into a particular tunnel, then you might not need uh, a level 2 or a level 3 of tunnels. Therefore, you don't need to build it. You don't have to spend that money uh, boring through that rock using your TBM and all the man hours and all the materials and all the maintenance required to do that. Thus, you're saving yourself millions of dollars in construction costs by using this platooning system. Uh, pods and platoons will be very profitable even when 50% empty. If you are using the system and there's not many people in a particular pod, you can get behind another pod and it's going to be very efficient to get from point A to point B. Thus, you're saving money because you don't need to pack the pod full of vehicles for it to be uh, economically viable. You only need maybe three or four people in a pod and you're still going to make a good deal of profit. So platooning makes sense for all the right reasons. Now, how in it in now I'm not I'm not some kind of uh, expert in uh, drag forces and, and, and wind turbulence and all these things that affect vehicles and, and even skyscrapers and buildings, but it's clear that the science is there to show that this does work. And um, there's actually studies to show that the closer you get to the vehicle in front, the more savings you can get. In fact, if you could get within four or five inches of the vehicle in front of you, obviously that technology doesn't exist yet, but if you could do that, that would make massive savings to running the vehicle behind the lead vehicle. And obviously, if you can have more and more vehicles in a convoy, that's perfect. So I've got this crude diagram. As you can see, this is like a, a drone picture of two trucks that are platooning. You see the red area. This is this area of high pressure, that, which is pre preventing this vehicle from getting up to a high speed. By putting this vehicle behind it, not only are you getting rid of some of this low pressure area here, there is now not this red area in front of this truck here because it is behind this vehicle. So in fact, you're helping both vehicles. This is how I see it actually working in the tunnel. Um, you still have a high pressure area here in front of the lead pod, but these low pressure areas here in front, in front of the second, third, fourth and fifth vehicle will be much smaller in terms of their size. And thus, that will improve the efficiency of the actual system, allow these pods to have a greater range, and thus it will help the whole system in terms of making money. So there's, there's not really that many pitfalls to using this system. You've also got to imagine you've got this area here, which is essentially underneath the pods. You're going to have high pressure... Um, areas or pockets of air that can go underneath the vehicles as well these vehicles will have a flat body underneath thus again because there's a low drag coefficient of all these vehicles you're going to have very high levels of efficiency so it makes even more sense to platoon these vehicles here's an illustration of what it will look like obviously you'll have several pods lined up together so is platooning feasible for the Boeing company it is for the following reasons <clears throat> pods can seek out other pods that have a similar uh, destination so the pods will be run by some kind of central control system they will know the destination of all the pods that are currently in the system obviously if there are pods that are, are close by and they know they're going to a similar system they can join up with each other also you have the option of where you've got pods in between other pods that are going to similar destinations they could take an off-ramp and go to a lower level or a higher level, and then that would allow other pods to join up together. Or you could have pods, uh, you could have two platoons of, say, four vehicles, and they could join up to form an eight-pod platoon. Um, it relies on the construction of so-called smart tunnels. The tunnels will be incredibly smart. They will have a CCTV. They will have um, either 5G or Wi-Fi connectivity. Thus, all the pods will know where all the other pods are. They will be connected by one central control system. Um, there will be heat sensors in the tunnels. Uh, there will be motion sensors in the tunnels. We'll know if people enter the tunnels in case, you know, there's potentially going to be an accident. And then we can inform the pods to slow down to, say, 40 miles per hour. 
because there's someone in the tunnel. Uh, pods run and operate via the instruction set of a central computer system. This possibly could use some form of artificial intelligence uh, to work out the more, most efficient way of moving pods in and out of the tunnel and when is the most efficient uh, time to platoon uh, various pods. All pods can use a distress signal. If there's a pod and suddenly... Uh, it, it develops maybe a flat tyre or there's a failure in the electric motor, it'll instantly emit a distress signal. This will be communicated to all pods in the same tunnel within six, 700 metres of that pod and they will begin to break uh, slowly. And also any uh, platoons that are in that particular area, they will break apart and they will form uh, a distance between them of, say, um, 100 foot to ensure that there are no... Uh, uh, collisions or pileups. Um, <clears throat> machine learning over time will further improve the system efficiency. I imagine that a lot of people will, will use this system regularly, therefore their patterns and behaviours can be learned from the system and they can learn when is the most efficient time to pick up these people and then put them into platoons with other pods and other people that are using the system. Pod platoons would run with a five foot gap using V2V or vehicle to vehicle communication. Though there is potential for vehicles to communicate together once they form a platoon, that would make the possibility of an accident so minuscule that it won't even be worth thinking about. So again, another advantage of using a platoon with V2V. Uh, Boeing Co platoon can theoretically be 600 foot long, easily 600 foot long, with a five foot gap, the vehicles are around 17, 18 foot long. Easily, 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 you could put 40, 50, maybe even 60 vehicles in a platoon. And that would work perfectly fine as long as they were all going to a similar destination. Final thoughts. Okay, guys. So, uh, naysayers are repeatedly saying... A train can move way more people. I've heard that a few times on Twitter, even a few times here on YouTube. If we can put our pods into large platoons of, say, uh, four to ten vehicles, they essentially become trains. Uh, ten pods, that's potentially moving over 80 people. Thus, that's, that's pretty damn good in terms of uh, the density of the system. And you can have hundreds of pods at any one time, thus it will be as effective as a train. The cost savings could be enormous in a system with thousands of pods. If you are making the pods more energy efficient by running them in platoons, you you know if you've got uh, an energy bill of millions and millions of dollars, if you could shave 10-15% off that energy bill, you are talking hundreds of thousands of dollars saved every single month easily. Uh, could make passengers nervous. Granted, that's you know potentially something that might upset passengers. Um, I think it should be implemented in gradual steps. So the gap between pods could start off at 20 foot, then maybe two weeks later move it down to 16 foot, then maybe two weeks later move it down to 10 foot. Just to see what is comfortable with passengers and, and what is working essentially. Uh, we don't want the passengers to feel nervous. We want them to feel comfortable on the trip. Maybe the front window could be uh, dimmed. thus though, uh, Therefore they can't see, see the pod in front of them. That may make them feel a bit more comfortable. There are ways around this and it's worth looking into. Uh, it's got to be 100% safe. If it's 99.5% safe, it's it's not good enough. It needs to be 99.99999% safe, really, for people to use this system and for Elon Musk to feel comfortable uh, rolling it out. I'm under no illusion this is potentially dangerous. If something happens with the lead vehicle and there's a huge pileup, potentially there could be large numbers of fatalities. Therefore, it needs to be... Um, proven to be safe for many thousands of miles before we roll it out to the general public. Uh, right guys, what do you think of that? You think it's a good idea? I think platooning is a great idea. Really excellent, awesome idea. There are very, very few issues I can 
visualize of this platooning system. It will save hundreds of millions of dollars in construction costs. It will save hundreds of millions of dollars over the year. Or let's say a, a few a few thousand, well, let's say a few million dollars over the course of a year in terms of energy costs. It is a perfect system for the Boeing company. They should implement it. So if you've not already done so, please like and subscribe. Put your comments down below, guys. Tell me what you think of platooning. Do you think it's going to work? Um, I'd appreciate some feedback. Blah, 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 blah. I'd appreciate some feedback on Prediction 9. Let me know what you think about platooning. Uh, oh yeah, thank you guys. We've got two Patreons now. We've got Ashley Hill and Mike McLean. Thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon. That is a big thing for you to do. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you giving me a bit of your income that I can invest in this channel to make the videos even better. If you have not done so guys, please think about sponsoring me on Patreon. The link is below. If you don't want to do Patreon, maybe consider doing uh, Bitbacker. Send me some uh, Bitcoin Cash in the link below. One dollar will do. That's all that is needed to help support this channel. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate all the support. And remember, don't be boring. Hopefully see you again on the next video. Thank you.